today on All Out Brick, we're going to be taking a look at Toa Mata Nui. We're going to build the set, review it, and then give out a score. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Christian from All Out Brick. Welcome to another Mata Nui Monday. As always, the best way to tag along with us every week is to subscribe and turn on notifications. This week, we're going to be taking a look at set 8998, Toa Mata Nui, which was released in 2009 as a Toys R Us exclusive set. This set is considered by many to be the holy grail of Bionicle sets. Just getting it in this condition was a massive challenge in itself. Matsunui, in short, is the great spirit of the island of Matsunui, who was originally tasked with overseeing the well-being of the island's inhabitants, the Matoran. However, Makuta put him into a deep slumber, and his essence was placed into a colossal robot body. When the Mask of Life was eventually cast off the planet, it crash-landed on the desert world of Bara Magna, still containing the great spirit. As for the 2009 storyline, Toa Matsunui found himself in a world in turmoil, torn by tribal conflicts. He befriends a few of the Glatorian and Legends, which ultimately guides him to becoming a symbol of hope and leadership for the Agori. As for this set, it deserves its own lore. This set was, like I said, released in 2009 as a Toys R Us exclusive. To many fans, including my younger self, Toa Matsunui was a dream set since 2001. It's something you always wondered about early on in Bionicle, and I'm disappointed that I was not engaged with Bionicle when this set came out. It came with a price tag of $50, which by today's prices makes it one of the biggest missed opportunities of the time. The front of the box gives us a great look at Toa Matanui in all his glory on the sands of Bara Magna. In the background, we can see a very large ball joint, which is a reference to the enormous robots that come into play during 2010. There is also a very small silhouette of Toa Matanui leading the Glatorian legends. Also on the front of the box is a large rock with a Scarabax beetle encrusted on it. The Scarabax beetle, I'm assuming, is a reference to the scarabs, which were beetles in ancient Egypt that symbolized birth, life, death, and resurrection. The left side of the box is a continuation of that rock with another image of Toa Matanui and the Scarabax beetle. The right side of the box is a continuation of the desert sands, which once again provides the name of the set and a Scarabax beetle. The back of the box presents a very large image of Toa Matsunui alongside the back side of the rock which we saw on the front. I'm geeking out over the graphic designers making the entire box art one continuous image. In the bottom right, there is a large ad for the Bionicle The Legend Reborn movie with some still shots. The top right gives us a look at all six Glatorian legends as well as a code for the set and a preview of the play features. Inside the box there are three numbered bags as well as two instruction manuals. Since this is such a special set and getting it in new condition is a very big deal, I'm actually going to release the unboxing as a separate video that will be posted tomorrow on the channel. I genuinely cannot contain my excitement for this set. I honestly can't even believe that it's sitting here right in front of me. I just really, truly hope that the designers did the most wanted Bionicle set of all time justice. Let's go ahead, complete the build. After a 45 minute build, Toa Matanui is now complete. The build experience was nothing spectacular, it was your pretty standard, typical Bionicle Titan set. One thing I did do myself instead of the instructions was save that mask for last even though it came up in bag 1. That just felt right to me. I'll go ahead and say it right away, this set is spectacular. The construction is incredibly well put together, and the proportions were absolutely nailed. He looks strong agile, and powerful all at the same time, as if there's a human resemblance to him that stretches into something much more developed. The color scheme works, but there is a caveat for me. We all know that the bright light orange pieces should be gold. There's simply no way to deny that. There are a few gold pieces included throughout the body, but it leaves me wanting more of them. The bright light orange pieces include the chest armor parts, shoulder pads, forearms, leg accent pieces, and a weapon hilt for his left hand. Jumping up to one of those gold parts is of course the mask. It's actually the one only exclusive piece to this set, and after all of the buildup, all of the story that led to it, the mask was worth the wait. It's noble, 
the details are very sharp, and it just has a look to it that can't be mistaken for something less significant than it is. While the mask is going to get a lot of the love, one of the more underrated parts to this set in my eyes are the hands. I can't think of better executed hands for the previous Titan sets. We actually have individual adjustable fingers that are proportionate with the rest of the set. It's a small detail that really pleased me while building the set. Another area that I really like for this set are the pistons that bridge the legs to the torso. Not only are they functional with the legs as we'll see later, but they aesthetically are perfect to the eye as a mechanical transition that make this set feel more robotic. I also really like the yellow armoring on the calves. They're very effective in creating a larger scale without adding a ton of weight or additional parts. The weaponry included in this set is the pretty standard sword and shield combo. The shield does have a nice shape to it thanks to the weapon pieces used to make it. These pieces can actually hinge in and out to change the profile, and I assume grab a hold of larger enemies. It also has a built-in Thornax launcher that operates as essentially wrist rockets. If you've seen previous Titan reviews that I've done, you'll know that I can be quite critical of bad articulation and very pumped up about good articulation. This set is the latter. The articulation is peak Bionicle. I truly cannot think of a model with smoother, more organic articulation. The shoulder joint has been perfected for larger sets that utilize double sockets. The rest of the arms function exactly as human arms do at the elbow and wrist. And as for the legs, just perfection. The hips, just like the shoulders, have no restrictions for being attached with two sockets and have the exact amount of range of motion that you'd need. The knees and ankles have a great range of motion as well. But perhaps my favorite part about the articulation is the amount of friction. I'm hoping this isn't just due to these parts being brand new, but the friction achieved at the different joints allow for nearly any display option without worry of limbs slipping or falling down under the weight of themselves. However, amongst the many great things about this set, it didn't avoid a major pet peeve of mine, the back. The back was left essentially bare aside from the piston pieces that connect to the legs. There's also two life counters. Honestly, I think it would have been hilarious if they put like four of them on here just to signify how much of a beast Matanui is. Just as I always say, one or two armor pieces here would add that extra step to the model. However, this one manages to still look great without them. When it comes to the price of this set, it's simply insane. Just the mask will cost you over $200 on Bricklink. That point aside, you can expect this set to cost around 630 US dollars in used condition. In used condition. In brand new sealed condition, these are very hard to come by, but you can expect them to cost around 2000 US dollars. It's the holy grail for a sealed collection, or if you're insane like I am, you'll go ahead and open it up. Don't spend $2000 on the set if you're going to open it up. I obviously only did that to keep it consistent with this series, and frankly, you guys deserved it. I otherwise would absolutely not be opening up this set if it was brand new. In terms of a score, I'm going to give Toa Matanui a 9-2, which if you've been keeping up with this series, you'll know that that is the highest score I have ever given to a Bionicle set. While at the time it certainly wasn't meant to be, this is truly the culmination and perfect penultimate wrap up to this generation of Bionicle. Looking at it right now, I wish I had gotten this set as a kid. It's the manifestation of my childhood, and I am so thankful that the designers did it justice. If there were more gold pieces and back armor on the set, we would honestly be looking at a 9.9 .9 out of 10. Call me crazy, but I can see the entire history of Bionicle in his mask. The shades of 2001 all the way through 2009, it's all there. Looking back at the 2001 Toamata, this set feels like the peak evolution of those sets. I am proudly going to keep this displayed in the new studio, which you'll see soon. And while this feels like the last Bionicle set, there's actually one more video to make for Generation 1. The Bionicle stars, aka the Spider-Man Far From Home to this Avengers Endgame, still needs to be completed. I know there are a ton of questions of what's going to come after that, and I promise that all of those questions are going to be answered after we wrap up Gen 1. Just stick with me, there is a plan. So 9-2, that's your review. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to be the first to see all of our future content. Also be sure to check us out on our website and follow along on our social media pages. Until next time, stay bricking.